So, more time in the gym equals more progress, right? Well, it depends. If you're looking to lose fat, that might not be the case. A meta-analysis, a study of many studies, looked at the data from 29 studies where they compared the effect of HIT, which is high intensity interval training, which are workouts that are shorter but more intense, with MICT, moderate intensity continuous training, where heart rate is lower but workouts are usually longer. To see their effect on fat loss and cardiorespiratory fitness of 1,338 participants, both were effective for improving body compositions and cardiorespiratory fitness, but the HIT group got better results on reducing waist circumference, fat mass percentage, and VO2 peak. Okay, so longer in some cases isn't always better. But how long should each workout be? And how much more effective is HIT? This study looked at 40 students, 20 men, 20 females, with the average BMI of 29.5, about the average in the US right now. They split them evenly into two groups. Group 1 did only HIT, the group 2 did only MICT. The workout length on the HIT group was 28 minutes long. The workout length on the MICT group was 35 minutes long. Both groups did their workout three times a week for eight weeks, and the results will blow your mind. Even though the workout length on the HIT group was shorter, the males lost 2.4 times more body fat than the MICT group, with the average person losing about 24% of their body fat. The females who did HIT lost 3.8 times more body fat than the females who did MICT, with the average person losing almost 27% of their body fat. And that's not all. Let's look at the health metrics. Triglyceride, the health metric that indicates your rate of metabolism, except for BMI and body fat, triglyceride is one of the metrics that correlates the most with all cause mortalities. The males in the HIT group reduced their triglyceride with 16.4% on average. A female reduced it with 18.9% on average. While the group in the MICT, both males and females experienced no significant reduction in their triglyceride. When it comes to LDL cholesterol, often called the bad cholesterol, LDL is what cardiologists believe builds plaques in our arteries. Ideally, we want it to be as low as possible. The males in the HIT group reduced their LDL 175% more than the MICT males. Females in the HIT group reduced their LDL 45% more than the females that did MICT. In this study, on average, participants doing HIT lost 28% of their body fat in less than two months by only working out one and a half hours a week. Think about that. Do you have enough spare time to spend two hours in the gym for every single workout? I know certainly I don't. But do you need to spend two hours in the gym every session to reach your goals? Well, it depends. How effective a workout depends on the intensity and volume, but usually more volume equals longer workout. But a workout can be just as effective for fat loss without increasing the volume, but just simply increasing the intensity. But forget all that, because here's the thing with fat loss, and this is what your personal trainer will wait three weeks deep into your program where you will spend probably $500 with them already before reminding you that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. But the study I just talked about showed that people lost 28% of their body fat by only working out one and a half hours a week. Well, there's a big flaw in that study, but we'll get back to it 
later in the video. But just know that when it comes to fat loss from exercising, the most important thing is finding something that you can consistently stick with over time. You being consistent over time have a compounding effect because you working out regularly leads to you prioritizing other health-seeking behaviors like you prioritizing your sleep, you eating healthier, you drinking less. That's why every person who gets a whoop becomes a health guru overnight and start posting about their sleep scores, recovery scores, reposting human reels on their stories and posting about them doing saunas and ice baths on their stories like chill. I just want to be on Instagram so I can stalk my exes, see their stories, thinking about the good old times, thinking about how I screwed things up without them make me feel even worse because their stories pops up and make me feel like a lazy piece of shit. Like, we get it, you're a training person. What was I talking about? But you get my point. The calories you burn in one session might not have a massive impact on your fat loss, but you being consistent over years has a massive impact on your health. I've never met someone that have worked out consistently, by that I mean at least three times a week, for years, not for months and not on and off, that is overweight or obese. Even if they enjoy the occasional fast food or alcohol, the number one barrier for young adults and middle-aged people is that they don't have enough time or that they're too busy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to solve the biggest problem for achieving sustainable long-term fat loss from your workout, which is time, regardless of how busy you are. Your time is precious, so don't waste it sitting in traffic. Tip number one is shorter your commute. Even if the gym that is closer is more expensive, let's say it's $20 more per month, consider this. Most people spend 20 minutes commuting to the gym and 20 minutes commuting back. That's a total of 40 minutes. Even if your workout is only one hour, it will take you almost two hours of your days just because of commuting. If you can shave that commute time down to 15 minutes for both ways, you'll save yourself hours every month. That $20 you pay extra for a gym that is closer, that's only one extra hours on your job, I reckon. Plus, you'll save also money on gas and transportation when you reduce commute. If the local gym that is closer is smaller, it doesn't matter because you don't need a big gym to get results. In fact, a smaller gym might be a good thing. From experience, smaller gyms are often better for beginners because many people feel anxious in crowded gym environments as a beginner. And as a beginner, many prefer to exercise in a more private space. If your goal is to not eat for six months so you can step on stage with a fake tan and a pair of speedos to impress a bunch of other dudes and not call it gay and call it bodybuilding instead, then this next tip isn't for you. But if you're like most of us who aren't obsessed with how we look and just want to be healthier, the second thing you need to stop caring about is having the most optimal and perfect workout. The perfect workout usually takes one and a half hours to two and a half hours. For most people, a seven out of 10 workout that they can do consistently for years is better than a 10 out of 10 workout that they can only maintain for two months because you find out that is unrealistic for your schedule. And if you're unsure if you have enough time to complete your routine, Parkinson's law also applies to workout. Parkinson's law says that tasks takes as long time as you allow them to be. Often shorter time increases effectivity and you'd be amazed at how effective you can be in the gym when you have limited time. Also, it's always better to do 70% of your workout and stop there than to skip it at its whole because you don't have enough time to do the whole thing. If you stop giving a fuck about having a, the perfect workout, it will reduce a lot of procrastination. Most of us work out so we can have more energy. Many of us do it so we can stop feeling tired and lethargic after 4 p.m. But here's the thing, workout can make you feel more energized afterwards, but they can also leave you dead tired. And hard workout doesn't just drain you physically, but it can drain you mentally too. So the next tip is plan your workout 
to complement your life. From experience, I've noticed that people with demanding jobs or demanding private lives, working out midday or later in the day is often the best. It helps them disconnect from their daily stresses and re-energize them a little bit. Working out in the morning could drain them so much mentally that it's tough for them to perform their best at work, which is people's usually number one priority. But it can also have the opposite effect. It's all about how you feel after your workouts. For many, cardio and running doesn't drain them as much mentally as weightlifting do. Running can actually be great for mental clarity and could therefore boost your performance at work. If that is the case for you, then working out before your job might be a good idea. You should just consider that workout, it should boost your energy. It should make your private and professional life easier, not kill your energy for the rest of the day. Here's why shorter workout is great. Shorter workout demands less commitment, make them easier to fit into your schedule and helps you overall stay more consistent. Here's how you can make shorter workout more effective even though you're spending less time in the gym. You can start introducing HIT to your routine. Whether it's weightlifting or cardio, by doing your program in a shorter time, by just simply cranking up the intensity, it actually improves your workout when it comes to cardiovascular benefits and also fat loss. Secondly, embrace minimalist workout. You can do it by choosing exercises that give you the most for your time, like exercises that train multiple muscles at once, known as compound exercises. Thirdly, you can also reduce your workout time by reducing warm-up. And how you'd reduce warm-up is by doing more machine movements. I've seen a lot of people getting injured doing deadlifts, squats, but never seen anyone do getting injured doing leg curls. And if you want to build muscle but short in on time, use machines. Machines require less warm-up, have low risk of injury compared to free weights, and let's be honest, nobody likes warm-ups. If you want to learn the best exercises that will get you the most for your time in the gym, check out the link in the description. I'm giving you 30 ways you can revolutionize your training and thought loss in 30 days. This advice your local PT would charge hundreds of dollars for, but I'm giving you for free. Working out shouldn't feel like a drag. It should feel like grabbing lunch. Quick pit stop for 30 to 45 minutes, then back to your day. If your goal is to lose fat and just be healthier, longer workout isn't always the best option, especially if you think long term. Sure, longer workout might have their benefits, but for many that are just interested in getting healthier, shorter workout is usually better for them. And by integrating structures like HIT or using compound movement exercises to train multiple muscle groups at once, or choosing exercises that doesn't require warm-up, you can get more for your training time with shorter workouts. There's something you should know. In the meta-analysis where they compared HIT and MRCT, the exercises were solely cardio running, elliptical machines, biking, and other aerobic exercises. In the second study with the 40 students, where the HIT group lost on average 28% of their body fat in 8 weeks, the only exercising that they were doing was running on the treadmill. I just finished the HIT running routine that they did on that study and I burned 360 calories in only 28 minutes. If you want to get healthy, improve your health markers and just lose some fat, then there's nothing wrong with doing cardio exercises. Consistency is what's most important. But here's the one problem with only doing cardio, is that you'll end up losing fat without building muscle, and you end up looking like a melted candle, aka skinny fat. However, you can actually incorporate HIIT principle with weightlifting, allowing you to build muscle while shedding fat. But the question would then be, would it still be as effective for fat loss? So I'm going to do that next, HIIT with weightlifting, to see if it's still as effective for fat loss. If you want to see the result of that and find out the type of workout that burns the most calories and what is best if you want to lose fat effectively and build muscle at the same time, then you should check out this video. Stay healthy, keep striving, and I hope I see you over there.